Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of Isaiah as we uh, continue on as I read. Some of you have been listening for a long time. Others of you may have joined me more recently. But uh, I've been doing this for about three years now. Maybe not quite, but close to that. And I've been through these passages of Scripture in my own devotional reading a number of times. And so if I repeat, I apologize for anything that, um, that I might have uh, already said that you've already heard, and uh, uh, I'm just being repetitive that way. I don't think today's devotion is going to be that way, but uh, nonetheless, uh, these are the ways the Lord has encouraged me and spoken to my own heart, and sometimes he has to speak more than once to me over the same passage of Scripture, as I think probably most of us experience. Now, in Isaiah chapter 9, you probably will remember that this is the passage of Scripture that is quoted very often at Christmas time for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and so on. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor. Now, that's in the first part of Isaiah 9. But I want us to focus on the second part of Isaiah 9. And it starts in uh, about verse 9 of this particular passage. And, um, and here in this, in this place, excuse me, it's verse 8. But um, in this particular passage... God sends to the people of Israel and Judah, I think he has Israel in mind specifically here, that he sends to these people a number of warnings. Now, some people who hold a more naturalistic philosophy than I do, who think everything comes from natural causes and uh, there's no supernatural, would suggest to us that all of these things are just circumstantial and all of these things are just happenstance, but they're not. And the reason I know that is because in verses, uh, not, uh, excuse me, verse 12 and in verse 17 and in verse 21, if you'll look at that passage of scripture, if you're uh, not able to listen to or to look at it right now, that's all right, go back. But notice that there is a phrase that is repeated in these verses. And in verse 9, it says, uh, for all this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 12, that's where it is. For all this, his anger has not turned away and his hand is stretched out still. And that particular phrase is used in verses 17 and 21 as well. Now, what this means for us is that God, in his wisdom, in his mercy, has brought upon those people these afflictions in order for those people to repent and recognize that he's the one that they are supposed to turn to. But yet they didn't. For all this, his anger is not turned away, and his hand is still stretched out. He is the first cause of those particular issues, afflictions, struggles. And what his intent is, is for them to turn back to him. And that's what they have not done. And that's the same thing in our world. We experience those kinds of afflictions. There are, <clears throat> there are earthquakes. There are uh, all kinds of natural disasters that are happening in our world. Now, I'm not trying to say that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. If you are in a place where you are prone to uh, one kind of disaster as opposed to another, when those disasters come through, that it means that you are supposed to be on your knees repenting of whatever it is that he has uh, laid upon your heart. Actually, you are to do that. But there's not always the one-to-one -one correspondence of he's bringing this because you are the person who needs to repent. It may be that you are participating in something for which the whole of the community needs to repent. And then, yes, that's the, that's the way it's supposed to work. But the reality is that he is still the one who controls the weather, 
all of these natural events, everything that is happening in our world. And he's doing it so that we will turn back to him. For all this, his anger is not turned away. And, is, and, and so we need to understand that these things should prompt us, maybe as individuals, to recognize a specific sin, but more likely that our community and our society needs to understand that there are sins that we need to repent of. That's what's going on when various kinds of natural or political disasters are happening in our world. And that's why this is repeated actually not just three times in Isaiah 9, but again in another passage in Isaiah chapter 10. You can look that up. Father, we ask you to grant to us the grace to recognize your hand and, and to listen to your voice even through these things. Lord, we know that you have spoken in your word, but you are active in this world right now, seeking to bring your people into a right relationship with you. And I pray that you would help us who know you to listen to your voice in this way. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day now.